Hello and uh, welcome to this short webinar about how digitalization impacts project management. It's going to be fairly short. It's a, a half an hour is the time budget. We probably um, get through it in quicker than that. So what we've got is a few ideas in this area. It's not comprehensive and they're, they're drawn from personal experience. Um, so what we'll do is I'll go through the slides if I can. If you've comments, you might like to put them in the chat. And then um, towards the end, I'll stop and we'll open, we can open the microphones and talk to each other um, uh, about the topic. So just first of all, what we do, we help managers achieve uh, demanding assignments by giving them product consulting, coaching and training. And uh, over the years, we've worked in a lot of different sectors. And we've had lots of big clients and also SMEs, small companies plenty of them um, uh, over a long period of time, over several decades, in fact, and also across the world. The furthest away was New Zealand, I think, uh, but also Canada and South America and quite a lot in Asia as well. And these are things that we do. Oh, there's the team. It's, it's one team um, and we work you know, with each other. We live in different countries and we have different skills. A number of us are engineers, a number of us have doctorates and so on and we speak different languages, and um, that gives us a variety that helps us um, uh, interact with people. Okay, so um, let's go into the topic. So we're talking about um, how uh, digitalization affects projects. So the first thing is, what is a project? And we go to the book and we find that the uh, description that we all know about, that a, a project is something that is temporary, so a temporary organization, an endeavor, an undertaking. Um, which we do, and it creates a unique product or service. So we do it, and at the end, something has happened. Um, you get something. So it could be a thing. Um, for example, it could be, you know, uh, I don't know, a, a wall in the garden. Somebody asks you to build that. Or it could be an installed machine in a factory or something like that. Or it could be a service. Um, a good example would be in an insurance company, uh, they say, mm, we, we should really have insurance for, um, uh, shall we say, uh, people under 30 who are living at home uh, for driving their car. And they say, yeah, the people that stay at home, we, we think that they have less accidents, it's a different rate, and so on and so on. But the service is all of that thought out, the calculations, the prices, the publicity, everything that you need to offer the service. So, and when, if you had a project to deliver that, when it's done, it's done. And then um, another option is a change of state. For example, you get a certificate, the company gets a, a quality certificate. And I wonder, would any of you um, give me examples of project titles that you've been involved in? If you'd just like to type them into the chat, any, either from business environment or from uh, private environment, but examples of things which are projects. Enhanced pricing application for pricing accuracy, uh, actuaries in reinsurance. So, yeah, so um, was it developing the application, Killian? Yes, Jasun, it's developing the application. Okay, very good, very good. So we, we, we know what a project is, okay? And I just wanted to put it at the beginning. And then we just say what digitalization is. And digitalization um, is where you convert everything so that you know all of your processes are digital. I was actually on a, a conference today that was very interesting. And there was an example from South Africa where they had a mining company. And um, you know, it's very traditional. So every department had various ways of dealing with data. And when they did a survey, they discovered that you know, the data was sitting in the company, but it wasn't available. So somebody had it on paper, somebody else had a spreadsheet, um, you know, and then they had different formats. Some people had schedules, um, and then they, they had maybe different applications and so on, and minutes of meeting, all sorts of things. And the information wasn't there. And they decided that what they needed was that all of the information would be available digitally, because by doing that, then you, you can make sensible decisions about um, uh, you know, how you use it. Um, so um, they, they did that and, and they, they thought, oh, we'll, we'll just sort of improve the process if we've got. And what they actually said was that they had to go around and the first step was just to tidy up the existing data. 
you know, to find out what it was and who had it and have a big chart of who has what information and where is it and so. And then bit by bit, they migrated this onto a cloud and uh, the, the control was from the project management office. And then once they got there, then they were able to optimize processes, things that used to take quite a lot of time, for example. Um, they were able to um, do them more quickly because all the data was accessible in that format. But if in the middle of all that, you have something that you have to print out and sign, or you have to go to the market and you know, talk to people or hand over cash or anything like that, if it's not digitalized, then obviously um, th that's a block unless somebody is actually there to do it. Um, would that fit in with your experience of what digitalization is? Working on that as we speak. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, it's very interesting because people got the, the, the feel of it, particularly with COVID. Um, I heard of an example in Singapore, and it was just a restaurant, and they used to go down to the market every day and say, well, you know, we buy so many, whatever the food is over there, the, the various vegetables. But then the actual payments were all cash and so on, and somebody had to go back and walk to the bank and all that. And you can avoid all of that if you digitize. So that's what we're talking about. And I've got a couple of examples here, and then I'll go into some examples for projects. So one digitization example is, is DAB um, plus radio. Um, so in the old days, the radio worked, you had a transmitter and it sent a signal and you picked up that signal and then you could hear the station. And what they do with DAB is they, they might put several stations together, eight or 10, I believe is normal. And they put them all into one signal um, and then they send the signal out, and then on your radio set, you have to have something that disengages and says, oh, I want to hear number three, or I want to hear number five, and so on. And by doing it that way, they can get more stations sent out in the same bandwidth. And also the signals are digitized so that, um, as I think we all know, is that if the signal arrives, if a digital signal arrives, then it can be reconstituated um, perfectly. So you get really good quality through doing that. Another digitalization example is in hearing aids, um, that uh, basically you have an analog signal and they turn it into a number, say, oh, the, you know, it's so loud. And then they put it into a digital signal processor, which is a fantastic technology in such a tiny item, working on a very tiny battery. And then the calculations are done and then they put the, it, it's converted back to sound. And what I thought was interesting, I was at a factory that make these things and they said, oh yes, um, we just have one model and then we turn off various features for the cheaper ones. So they don't have a sort of a cheap one and an expensive one, but they just have a chip that does everything. And then if you want the cheap version, well, then they, they switch things off. And another example of digitization or digitalization is this BIM standard. I don't know if anyone has heard of that, um, but in building that you have, the, the way they describe it is a digital twin of the building. Um, so that, for example, um, you, as the architect does calculations on, on what size of heating to install, those calculations are actually kept and they're made accessible. And when they pass the building over to the user, um, the, uh, the, the calculations remain available. But also other data, like what, what doors did they install and what locks? And maybe in 10 years they say, oh, we've got a new type of electronic lock. And they can look up from the digital twin um, exactly which locks were installed and when they were installed, all that sort of thing. So those are about two or three examples. Does anyone want to comment on any of those? And then I'll go into how this uh, feeds into projects. Okay, so you've got the idea. So um, I, I've got, as I say, this is just a sample. We've only half an hour. So I picked out four things here. How, how digitalization impacts project management. And one is the increase in pace of communication. I, I'll give you examples later. Alignment of understanding. A project manager is trying to get everyone to agree to do things or you know, to fund it or to, to come to a meeting or to test something or develop it or you know, send it out. Whatever it is you're trying to do, you're trying to get understanding. And sometimes if you do it traditionally, they say, oh, I'm, you know, I'm sorry, I'm not in my office, you know, for the next three days. And then when you eventually talk to them, it's, it's resolved in 30 seconds. So that sort of thing is far less likely to happen if you, you're digitized in your approach. Another thing is that people expect real-time da real data wherever they are. Um, and that, that has a big impact on project risk. 
And another thing is that if, if the data is in the system, then you can start looking at, at the business and optimizing it. So those are four areas. So let me pick them out one at a time. So the first one I've got is pace of communication. And traditionally, people think a project, let, let's say, um, like I, either of the ones that were mentioned there, the digitizing of the high volume lines, there are certain technical things that you need to do. And you, you also need to pass information. So you say to somebody, well, you know, we've done this bit, you can do your bit now. And actually, the, the, the communication is just as much part of the project as the technical part. And in particular, if the, if the communication is blocked or it's late or it doesn't happen or there's noise or something like that, then the whole thing gets blocked. And so the pace of um, a, a project depends both on how quickly you do the work and on how you do the communication. Now, anyone who's familiar with the lean approach in manufacturing, you, you talk about waste. And one type of waste is time. So if, for example, I say to you, um, can you send me the password, please? And then I have to wait 24 hours. I've, I've lost 24 hours, you know, instead of just getting the password. So um, that sort of thing goes far, far faster. And again, my, my gut feel is that after COVID, um, th there's much more readiness to, to communicate things like that rather than say, oh, I'll have a meeting or I'll meet you at coffee and so on. And a spin-off of that is that the, you know, this waiting time can be cut out of projects and then they can go really, really fast compared to what we're used to. So th th this is the summary, if you like. Um, the, the implementation of a project depends on tasks and communication, but the communication, it, it's not in the background. It, it's a key part of the way things work. And then uh, because of that, you can get faster project implementation. And um, I've seen things done literally in, in half an hour that you know a few years back might have taken a week to do um, just because you, you, you get on and you do the transactions there and then and uh, you move forward. Okay, let's move on a bit. Um, the next one that I've got is that um, uh, one way of looking at a project manager is saying it's their job to get agreement about everything. You know, what are the objectives? What, what funding is available? Who's going to work on this way? You're going to do the work, what technology, you know, what the assumptions are, the whole lot, everything. And you're trying to get everyone to agree. And it takes a lot of time. You go around from one person to the other, and then the third person says, mm, I can't have X, Y, Z, and it conflicts with something that the first person said, and you go back, and so on. So with digitization, you can actually get that sort of agreement much more quickly. I mean, we're all familiar with it. Even on your telephone, you can set up a meeting for two or three people and say, look, I think the issue is you know, whatever it is. And do, do you mind, can we see if we could call those people straight away? And you call them and you go straight into a conference with two or three people. And because it's every day, it's easy to set up. You don't need conference calls and, um, you know, a microphone in the middle of the table and all those things that we used to have. Huh? You can do that. And the speeding up of something like that, people say, oh, yeah, that was the thing I didn't understand. I had a case of this re very recently, about a week ago where there was a, a, an element of a project and it didn't sort of seem to fit. And um, the person I needed to talk to uh, was available and we went straight on the phone. And in about two minutes, we discovered there was a misunderstanding on my side, that's fair enough, but it enabled the project to go ahead. So getting, going, getting the, the understanding from everybody uh, can go much faster than it would otherwise. Okay, let's move on to the third one. The third one I have is that everyone expects real-time data access. I was on a project in Berlin, and the guys were um, uh, responsible for power stations, electrical power stations. And every now and then they had a project, which would be to uh, a maintenance project. For example, it runs so many thousand hours, and then they have to take it out of service and um, do it up and so on. And we were talking about project risk. And they were saying, you know, I need all the data all the time. You know, wherever I am, I need Wi-Fi so that I can get it on my phone. And, and then when I get through, I need access to the data. A bit like the person that I mentioned earlier this morning, 
um, in, in South Africa. And if you don't have that, then you have um, a danger of, for example, repeat work because somebody used the wrong version of a, of a, a parameter. Or they say, oh yeah, that was changed two days ago, but you didn't see the new version, you know, and you do some work and you have to repeat it. And of course, repeat work always means delays, it always increases costs, and it's avoidable. And having up-to-date information on the project uh, by having it totally digitized um, it allows you to cut down on that particular risk. So that's my third one. And I move on to the fourth one. This is my fourth one. Um, the, the way businesses work these days, they're, they're data driven, and uh, you know they, ha they 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 look at every little detail um, of you know in production, for example, you know what it, where where in the production are we having failures, or um, in the selling process, you know wh where are the, the the sales coming from, and so on. But very very minor, should I say, tiny um, data points that previously they wouldn't have had. Um, and you can only do that if the system is, is digitized. And rather than talk about why it's that way, I just highlight Google and Amazon. I mean, isn't that what makes them rich? Amazon have this thing. We all know it. You know, you go in and you buy something from Amazon and then it pops up. Oh, here are some other things that you might like, which is driven by um, artificial intelligence. Um, but the artificial intelligence is using the data of what you know what you looked at the last time you logged on and so on, and so they 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 home in very quickly on the sort of thing that you might be interested in, um, and you know and then so many people out of that buy it and 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 so it goes and apparently that's a key issue to why Amazon is so rich. Google does the same sort of thing with data, in a way you'd expect a data company to do it, but Amazon they they apply that thinking in a, what you might call a normal commercial environment. So let's leave it at that. Thanks very much.